Hello everyone, welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. My name is Leanne Epp and today I am bringing you my best 20 DIYs of 2020. Let's get started here with number 20. All right, so for this first one here, I am going to turn these the front of these drawers. These drawers were given to me by my mom. I don't know where she got them from, but I'm happy she gave them to me. I'm only going to be needing the front of the drawer. I am going to uh, keep the drawer part maybe for something something else that may come up. But for now, we're just going to use the front of the drawers. I'm going to give them a good clean. These were very sticky. So cleaning them, giving them a light sand to get them ready for some paint. I am going to give them two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. And after the paint was dry, I am now going to distress them just a bit using a 120 grit sandpaper, focusing mainly on the edges. I am going to take these yellow florals that I'm absolutely loving, loving, and I am going to just kind of mark where I want to um, drill a couple of holes. That way I know um, where, I, where I'm going to drill them. <laughs> I'm going to use my drill to drill them. And what I want to do is basically um, be able to just thread through the holes some wire so that I can tighten the florals right on them. I just want to make some um, wall decor for um, fall. I did this for the fall season and they just turned out absolutely beautiful. I am now going to take some burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com and I am going to make simple bows and I am going to attach them right underneath where the little wire is so it can cover it up and as well as add um, additional detail to the decor. And then I did add one claw hook to the back of each so that they can be hung and that's it for this one. This one was so popular. A lot of people love, love, loved it, which is why I included it and it was my first one here at number 20.
All right, my friends. So I do want to tell you that for this best 20 DIYs of 2020, my friend Heidi Sambo and I got together, joined forces, and invited so many other DIYers to bring you their best 20 DIYs of 2020. There's going to be a link down in the description box with a playlist with tons of these mega videos from ton of DIYers. And if you want to get inspired, if you want something to watch through the holidays, this is the playlist for you. Check it out. It is in the description box. I also have Hattie Sambo's DIY channel down there for you to check out. Don't miss out. This is going to be a super packed playlist with tons of inspiration for you. All right. So for this next DIY, I am going to take this little table that I bought off of Marketplace. It was only $10. Can you believe that? Now it's in pretty rough shape. It was missing a knob. A couple of them were cracked. It was sticky. It was dirty. It was so neglected. But boy, is it beautiful. I think it's called a Martha Stewart sewing chest maybe something like that <laughs> but i just love the style and actually this is the second table that i redo with this style so after i cleaned it off very very well at first i thought i was going to leave the legs this tone you know their natural color i ended up later changing my mind but i am using a paint by amy howard and um love 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 this paint it is absolutely beautiful the tone i believe it's called drama queen and boy was it I surprised that I picked this color <laughs> if you follow me you know that I love white so when I picked this color I was like whoa what am I doing but let me tell you that the the end result is absolutely stunning all right so now I am going to just start painting the legs on a sideway motion and that's because I don't want to get any paint in the creases you see that nice little um detail that these legs have I want to make sure that we can highlight and still see those creases so if I go sideways the paint brush would just swipe across the lifted areas and then not have any paint in the creases. I ended up giving everything two coats and some areas a third one but only where it needed it where I saw that it still needed a little extra coat but other than that most of it had just the two coats. After the paint was dry, it was time to distress. Now it could, could have certainly be left as is. I know when I posted this video originally, many people commented, oh, you should have not distressed it. The reason why I distressed it is one, because I love the look. And two is because I love the way just details pop. So if you see the side of the table, it has those like folded kind of details. I just love the way that once you distress them, they just pop and you're able to see them, especially after you seal everything and that whitish kind of tone disappears and you just have the contrast of the dark versus the pink and I think it turned out super beautiful.
All right, so now it's time to seal everything. I am using a top coat. This is Ver Polyurethane by Verithane in the Crystal Clear. And I, I'm using a sponge applicator. It's just so easy to just wipe it on. I'm going to do this several times. I did, believe I did four times on the top and two to three times on the base on the rest of the table just so that it's making sure that it's nicely sealed and it's nicely um, just it's going to be very durable for whoever bought it. And actually this little table sold within hours of me posting it. So originally I thought about leaving the drawers just as just like is, but it was the sides were so bad. I don't know what happened to them. They was just so scratched up and they just needed just a little something. So I decided to um paint them. I decided to paint them in a dark tone. I normally don't do this. Most most of the time the sides of the drawers are fine. But for this one, I don't know what was going on. So I decided to just give it one coat of um I believe this is a like a regular household paint and this was a while you know earlier in the year so i don't remember the color if i can find it i'll have a link down below but or written down below but um nonetheless it's a darker gray tone and it's just a nice contrast from the pink and i did this on all the drawers Anytime I have tables or dressers that I redo, I often change the pads on the bottom. That way they're nicely um, soft and new and they're not going to scratch up anyone's floor that they have it. You know, like mine because it's so beautiful as you can see. <laughs> All right, so I'm about done here, but I am going to add these crystal knobs that I have often on hand. I use them all the time. They're very inexpensive. I do have them in my Amazon store, which is linked down below. Um, they come in a pack of about 12 or so. And I, like I said, I use them all the time. They just look so beautiful. They're so chic. And I just love the way this little dresser turned out. This was one of the most popular furniture flips I have done. And like I said, it's sold within hours. And I just think the transformation is just all stunning. Of the snow in this winter land used to look so pretty. Now making me moody. All right, guys, so for this next DIY, I am going to take this uh, trashed, recycled piece of box <laughs> from Little Muffins that my kids just love. I am going to make a cute little farmhouse box, and I am going to combine it using these sides of drawers. Speaking of drawers, earlier. Um, but, of course, I got to make some cuts and make it fit so that it's a nice fit for my box. So, first, I am going to take the box and just kind of place it on top, and that way I can measure and mark where I need to make cuts using my miter saw.
I also made angled cuts that way it looks like a little like a little farmhouse basket I'm gonna use this dowel in a little bit to create a handle but I'm just using it here to kind of mark that way I know which width spade blade I need to use to make the holes I'll do that on both sides And once I had that done, now it's time to attach the sides to the box. So I'm just going to use some hot glue as well as staples. That way it's nicely secure. For the other sides, I thought about removing the flaps, but I just decided to keep them because it makes the box a lot sturdier. So I'm just gonna hot glue them in place. And now I am going to give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. All right, so now I'm going to take the dowel that I used earlier and I'm just going to measure now so that I know where to cut and that way it'll fit nicely snug and flush to the sides. I am not going to take this piece of fabric that I have had for a while and I am going to just kind of keep it folded. It already had this fold on there and I thought it was perfect. What I want to create is just a liner for the inside. That way you can't tell that it was a box. So I'm just going to hot glue it right around the top rim and um, fold and kind of go as I go around the entire box.
I wanted this box to have a very, very farmhouse look. So I am going to just mark here every other, you know, every few inches. That way I can make lines across kind of um, looking like it's planked. And I'm going to use a permanent marker to do so. And now I'm going to add some distress uh, details on it using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray. And I'm just going to go around all the edges and a little bit in around where the lines are at. And that way it just gives it a nice farmhouse look. And I'm also going to paint the dowel this color. Using my Cricut, I had actually cut this um, cow and this little chicken and chick uh, for a previous DIY and I had the um, decal left over and I kept and I thought it would be perfect addition to add uh, to this front of this box and I think it turned out so cute. Alright guys, so for this next DIY, I am going to make a super chic, feminine, beautiful farmhouse sign. I'm going to take this piece of paneling that I believe, and again, it's been a few months, so if I'm, if I'm incorrect, I apologize, but I believe I got it in the scrap wood area at the hardware store. I get a lot of my woods, scrap pieces of wood for signs and projects there. You can get them very discounted. And I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. Once it was dry, I wanted this sign to have like a, a plank look. And you just saw me plank the box previously. But for this one, I wanted to give it a different look. So I am going to make not only lines across, but I'm also going to make several lines horizontally, alternating the position of them so it kind of looks like individual planks. And you'll see what I'm talking about once you see it. And then I'm going to add little dots to kind of make it look like they are nails on the planks. You that we learn through the wrongs. 
Once I was done with the planking, I am now going to take this stencil that I got off of Amazon. It is uh, Simply Blessed and it's a good size and I love, love the font it has. So I'm just going to secure it in place with some painter's tape and then just start stenciling it with, I believe this was the um, Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the Country Gray. I am now going to DIY a little wreath here. This wreath form I thrifted at the thrift store and I'm just going to add some boxwood uh, very loosely just to add some greenery and I'm going to attach it right on the left side of the simply blessed phrase and um, actually this sign I gave as a gift to a family member and this person still has it and she absolutely loved the way it turned out and it just makes my day where I can DIY something that's not expensive at all but yet it's just going to make someone's decor complete or just add a little touch that personal touch you know and I just love that she loved it it made me happy so but that's about this about this one I'm just going to attach the wreath right onto the side of it and so many people loved the simplicity of this sign, how easy it was and inexpensive. And um, that's why I wanted to include it in my top 20 for the year. All right, guys, so moving along. This next DIY, I am going to take this cork board that I thrifted at the Salvation Army. Great size, very thick, very durable. It did have that little shelf there. I'm not sure what it was, if it was a shelf or I wasn't sure, but it was only attached by screws, so it was very easy to remove, and that's what I did. Oh, I'm driving 
All right, so now I'm gonna take this It's So Good To Be Home stencil and I am going to stencil it right at the bottom towards the left side of the cork board. That way it just adds not just a place where you can put notes and pictures on, but it also serves as like a little wall decor and I thought it was a perfect addition to it. I got this, I believe, this stencil I got on Amazon. Um, and I, as you can tell, I've used it several times already. It's one of my favorite. This board here, I also got at the scrap piece of wood area in the hardware store, and it was cut this size. I did not even have to cut it. I'm just gonna use it as is, and I'm just gonna give it two coats of regular Valspar white household paint. After the paint was dry, I did flip it around and I am going to add several of these claw hooks. I'm doing it now before I add anything else to it because that way it's just easier to work. Um, and um, I did that. I believe I added three just for to make sure it was nicely secure on the wall. All right, so now it's time to just add the cork board onto the whiteboard and I'm just going to place it on the top left hand corner and I'm just basically going to screw it right in. I'm going to add a screw in each corner. All right, so now that the board is attached, I'm going to add these farmhouse style coat hooks. And are they beautiful? I get them on Amazon. I believe I do have them on my Amazon store. And again, it's it's linked down in the description box. They're just beautiful. They come several in a pack and they're just such good quality. I thought it would be a perfect place to, and yes, I'm having a hard time with that screw. <laughs> so I am going to um, just place them here, three on the bottom. And then as an added detail, I then added clips that I also got on Amazon and I am going to add them to the right side of the board. That way it's just another place where it can, it can hold notes and pictures or lists, whatever um, anyone would wanna add to it. And I am just about done with this one. And I included this one because it is just so beautiful what you can do with something that only cost me a couple of dollars. And how awesome does it look? I wish I could have kept it, but I didn't have room for it anywhere in my home. But the girl who bought it absolutely loved it. And she has it in her entryway. And I could not be any happier.
take this two by four and I cut it into three sizes. It is an eight inch, 14 inch and 21 inch. Did not mean him for that. I just made cuts, <laughs> but that's, that's the size that it came out to be in case you were wondering. I'm just going to sand them down until they are smooth enough to the touch, but I'm not looking for perfection because I want these to be very distressed and farmhouse looking. The smaller one, which is the top one, is going to be in the white. This is the Linen White by Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint. The middle one is going to be in a green that I cannot remember right now, but I'll have it in the description box. It is by Dixie Belle. And then the bottom one is going to be, of course, in the Farmhouse Red that I have used <laughs> in this video. And um, that's from Rust-Oleum as well. I decided to only paint the front of the wood. I don't want the back or the sides to have any paint. I want that bare wood to 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 show. Um, like I said, I will be distressing the colors, so I just wanted those sides to be just bare wood, just like they were. So once it was dry, I'm now going to take my electric sander and I am going to sand away some of the paint to give it a distressed look. Once again, using my Cricut, I cut out stencils that says, believe in the magic of Christmas. So the top board is going to say believe, the middle one's going to say in the magic, and the bottom one is going to say of Christmas. And then I am going to stencil them. The red and the green are going to be stenciled with white linen from Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint. And the top one will be chalk paint as well by Rust-Oleum, but in the charcoal tongue. All right, so now I'm gonna make some marks here because I want to drill some holes and add some um, dowels. That way I can secure each one to each other and they're not falling apart. I'm going to secure them with the dowel as well as, as, well as wood glue. So here I am just kind of measuring and making cuts on the dowel to make sure that they fit perfectly. And guys, I want to tell you that a lot of the tools, paint, and supplies that I use on all my videos, I do have in my Amazon store. I have the link to that Amazon store in the description box. So if you're interested in checking it out, it is down there. All right, so to finish it off, I'm going to add two of these evergreen picks. Two of them are going to be between the top and the middle board. And then there's going to be two other ones on the other side between the middle and the bottom boards. I just wanted to add a little bit more of a crisp. Days and cheer, but now I got my eyes. 
all right so moving along here i am going to do what i'm going to do here for this next diy this was something i did for the summer and i wanted to create a nautical theme kind of um uh, diy so this is going to be a ship wheel and i grabbed one of these floral rings i believe they're called um, like a wreath form from the dollar tree and i marked where i wanted to make holes because i'm going to use dowels that i'm going to place um, so that they can be like the handles on the wheel so i'm just going to drill these holes using a spade blade right all around where i marked cigarettes on the table dirty plates on the stove i don't know if you know where to start but i know where you'd like to be while I'm cutting, I am using the dowel that I'll be using and just inserting it and making sure that I am drilling the hole directly on the opposite side. So that's just what I'm doing here. I'm just making marks that way. They're all going to be looking even to the eye. All right, so now I needed to come up with a way to add a center to the wheel. So I'm going to use this um, pool noodle and I am going to cut just about two inches from one side. And then that's going to be my center of the wheel. So I'm going to place it in the center of the wreath form. And then I am going to start placing the, the dowels here. But I need to have this one there so that I know how much I need to cut from each dowel. So I'm just going to hand place it here and mark where I need to cut and do that all around. After I cut them using my miter box, I'm just going to sand them down just a little bit to make sure that there are no splinters and I should have um, just dowels ready to be inserted in the ship wheel and they're going to be beautifully handled. Well, hopefully, <laughs> but I think it did turn out good. But that is why it's in my top 20, right? <laughs> All right, so I am going to... Um, like you see here just place them and here i am just kind of placing them all at once the reason why i'm not placing and gluing placing and gluing is because i want to make sure that the little center part stays as much in the center as possible so i don't want to make the mistake of gluing and then you know having to like unstick something so that's just what i'm doing once i have it where i want it then i'm going to start gluing everywhere i mean everywhere where the dowel meets some sort of foam i added hot glue <laughs> All right, so now I took it outside and I started spray painting it with Rust-Oleum flat white in the spray paint. And I don't know if you've ever sprayed foam, but uh, it doesn't happen very well. 
so um, the foam was literally absorbing the paint so I ended up having to take it outside and give it a few coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white um, you can see here that it was just uh, some of it you know took it you know but um, I was just not happy with the way that was absorbing right into the pool noodle so I just gave it a couple coats all right so now I'm going to take the same pool noodle and I'm just going to um, use it to trace and just use this piece of scrap canvas from a Dollar Tree canvas and that way I can use that to place right over it and um, I don't have to have that hole in the center of the pool noodle or in the center of the ship wheel. Met him on a sunny day in late July and everything turned upside down. All right, so now I'm going to use a permanent marker and just start distressing it. This is where I think the wheel took just a beautiful turn here. I think it just added character, dimension. I just love the way this, this distress actually turned out on this ship wheel. And I just did that sparingly everywhere all around. I felt it could have used some distressing. And as an added touch, I am going to take this chew twine and I'm just going to start uh, wrapping it around the main circle, so the main wheel, and I'm going to skip every other like section. So I'm going to do it only in the three sections, skipping one in between. That way it's not on all the sections. So I'm just going to wrap it around several times until I kind of like what I see. And we're just about done with this one, guys. And when I posted this originally, gosh, so many people absolutely like loved it. And I loved it too, but I was just impressed. <laughs> and that's why it is here in my top 20 of 2020. All right, so for this next DIY, I am going to take these two little tables, and they're beautiful as is. They're like side tables, but they're a little larger than a typical side table. But um, they matched, they were perfect, and I just thought it would be a great, great project for me to give them a new look, new life. The first thing I needed to do was to tighten the base of the tables because they were a little wobbly when I first got them. And after that was nicely tighten i am now just going to give it a good clean they weren't horribly dirty but i just wanted to make sure they were nice and clean and ready for some paint i am going to paint them using rust-oleum chalk paint in the aged gray it's a very light gray and it has a uh, a very true gray tone you know how sometimes some grays can look beige maybe bluish purplish this one almost has like an almost true, true gray. I really like it. So I am going to give everything two coats of it. Day in late July and everything turned upside down. I 
And then once the coats were dry, I am now going to distress. You know that I like my distress look. So I'm just going to use a 220 grit sandpaper and just start distressing. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to focus on the edges and the details of so each table. I am now going to seal everything using Verithane polyurethane and my sponge applicator. I'm going to seal everything giving the top, I believe I gave it three coats, and the base I gave two coats. I got this feeling like it's starting now, starting now. I feel adventurous with you. And there is nothing that can hold us back, hold us back. We can do what we want to do Cause we got all the time in the world For better or worse We should stay together So let's stay young and in love We should focus on us Forever Yeah baby if you I wanted to add some added dimension and added, um, I guess, antique look to it. So I'm going to use some antiquing wax here from Dixie Belle in their brown tone. I'm going to just wipe it on and then wipe off the, or brush it on and wipe off any excess. This is just going to highlight all those little creases that are in there on the legs as well as the base. And you're going to see how just, it just pops and it just gives it a grungier, more antique look to it. And here I'm going to show you what it looks like with the wax and then no wax. You can see how it just looks brighter and it's fine. I could have left it as is. The distress look looked beautiful, but I just wanted to add a little bit more antique antiquing technique to it. And I just love the way it turned out. So I'm just going to give you a before and after look here. These little tables sold instantly as well. They did not last long when I posted them for sale, but what a, what a beautiful, beautiful new look they got.
All right, guys, so for this next DIY, I am going to show you how I created this uh, very expensive look that I saw online for a lot less in my Inspired Look for Less series that I had this year. I want to fill in this wall that was bare in my living room. I saw this sign is very simple in white and black, and it just had a simple love. And I also saw these um, hooks that I wanted to recreate as well. So I am going, I placed them here because it's one of my favorite, favorite um, kind of like dupes <laughs> that um, I created of the year. And I wanted to show you, and those are the hooks that I am going to try to recreate. So they were very expensive and I thought I can definitely make this for a lot, lot less. So the first thing I wanted to do was to create the love sign. This is more of that paneling that I can get at the scrap uh, wood area at the hardware store. Um, I believe it was already this size, but I could be wrong on this one. Maybe I trimmed it a little bit, but I can't quite remember. I'm going to give it two coats of regular household latex paint. Something's off The way you look and how you pause When you talk I think you said enough You said you'd love for me Something brand new You said this is something You would never do Here we are in your car Let me say who you are Who you really are, are yeah. Don't Using my Cricut I designed the word love and kid you not, I found the exact font, I can't remember what it was, that, that was in the original, which was so lucky. I'm so happy that I found it. So I cut it and now I'm going to place it. And of course, you're probably thinking, yeah, but where are the tails? Well, I had to freehand those. So I'm just going to place the word love right in the center. And then I'm going to use permanent marker and freehand the tails of the L as well as the E. And here I'm just kind of practicing, guys. I was nervous. I mean, I had painted this thing. <laughs> it was pretty much done. And now I'm just like, holy smokes. So here I am using pencil, just praying that it turns out. And um, I actually got it right on the first try. I was so impressed and so happy that it actually worked out. All right, so the board was very thin because it was paneling. So I added these two scrap pieces of one by fours for two reasons. One is to make sure that the paneling was not going to bow. And two, I think it was just going to add a little bit of depth to the, to the sign. So when I put it on the wall, it's not like this thin paneling on the wall, but it has a little bit of um, depth and just kind of sticks from the wall. Now, as I stapled these or not stapled them, as I nailed these using my nail gun, you can see where the nails are at. So I'm just gonna fill it in using some spackle and then paint over it to make sure it is a smooth transition. I did add a couple of claw hooks to the back, which was also a good thing that I added the one by fours because I had somewhere to screw them into. And that way they would be nicely um, secure on the wall.
time. So for the coat hooks, I am going to take this two by eight that I had in the garage and I'm going to cut them into squares. I did that using my miter saw and I'm going to give it two coats of regular household latex paint. remember those coat hooks that i got um or that i placed in that command center so these are more of it i told you i loved them and i'm just going to place them right in the center that way it has that same look of the inspiration one that i found And now I am going to add one claw hook on the back of each. That way they can each be individually um, hung. Actually, I placed two on each because that way they weren't going to be teeter tottering from, you know, side to side, but they could be nicely um, secure on the wall. And then I added a few farmhouse details to it, like a little basket that I DIY'd, a nice blanket that I had, um, and just some things, a little wreath form. And I'm just going to show you here what the originals look like. And then this is what mine look like. And I love it. I still have it on my wall. It's one of my favorite DIYs that I have ever created. So many of you love, love the way that it turned out in comparison to the original. And I myself was just very pleased with the way it turned out. Alright, so now I'm going to take this piece of 1x8 that I got who knows when. It's been in my garage. 
I know you guys probably think, how many stuff does she have in her garage? Well, really, it's really packed with stuff. But I keep everything. So I'm going to stain it using this uh, Waverly. Oh, my gosh. Um, antiquing wax. And once again, I'm just going to um, wipe it on and or brush it on and wipe it off just like I did with the rust one. All right. So now I'm going to use this technique that I used in a previous DIY for fall. I'm going to scrape paint this so I'm not even letting the glaze or the wax fully dry. I'm just going to dip the uh, scraper on the paint with very little paint as you saw and I'm just going to keep scraping as it paints. This is going to give it a very weathered rustic look. So it's going to look like it's been painted and it's been weathering for many many months or even years. And I love the way this turned out last time I did it. And I'm just going to um, use it on this one too and see how it turns out. Look at that grain. Isn't it beautiful? All right, so I'm going to take this piece of scrap um, leftover decal that I used, or stencil in this case, but I used the decal for a previous DIY and I kept the stencil portion of it and I'm going to use it for this one. I'm going to spell the word joy and I'm going to use this wreath from the uh, dollar spot at Target as the O. So I'm just going to place it, um, of course, the J on the top, the Y on the bottom, and I'm going to stencil it, but I'm going to do it the same technique as I did with the red paint. I am going to scrape these uh, the letters so they're going to be having the same kind of weathered look because I want it to look like these letters were already on this board as it's been aging and weathering. All right, so this little wreath is so adorable. Um, again, I got it at the Target dollar spot for $3. And so I'm just gonna place it in the center there as the O for the word joy. I'm gonna screw in a screw and then take some wire and attach, attach it to it.
going to take the same ribbon that it came with, but instead of having it um, as a hanging piece, I'm going to make a very simple bow and I'm going to hot glue it to the top of the wreath. I think it looks super cute. It matches the red so perfectly. And I think the off white kind of will bring in or kind of match a little bit the little triangle tree that I did. Same with this rope. This is leftover rope that I got from the same sack that I used for the triangle tree. So I am going to split it in two. So I cut it in half and now I am going to wrap it around the top and the bottom portion of this sign and staple it to the back and we'll be it's done. It's cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe. And I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for you and me. The snow is falling down, and the storm is on its way. But as long as you're around, everything will be okay. Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for me and you. I longed for this moment to have you for myself in a cabin out of nowhere. Just us All right, guys, so for this next DIY, it was part of some of my fall decor. I love this little truck that I created, a completely different look than what it originally had. You can see here that it had a very red and orange tone to it. It's from the Dollar Tree. I removed the little um, leaf that it had. And then I am going to um, separate the bottom from the top of the truck using the um, blade knife that I have here and making sure that I have a cutting board so that I, our cutting mat to make sure that it's not going to go through. And then once I cut it, I just wanted to make sure that it was nice and smooth. So I'm just going to sand it down until it's smooth enough um, where it's a seamless um, transition. Alright, so now I'm going to tape the wheels because I want to keep the wheels in its original color. And then I'm going to give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pin and the linen white. I am now going to take these little pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and remove the clip as well as the stem from them and I am going to actually cut them in half. The theme I was going for in this particular decor was a like a farmhouse teal and white look. So I am going to paint some of these in that beautiful teal color. It's called Mossy Bench by Bear. It's not chalk paint, it's regular latex paint. But isn't it just beautiful? I just love this color. I've actually painted furniture and other DIYs with it. And every time I use it, I fall in love with it all over again. And then I ask myself, why don't I use this color more? <laughs> but it's just beautiful. And then the other two, I'm going to just paint them in white by Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint.
because I removed the stem, I wanted to add a little bit more of a natural tone to it. So I'm going to, I literally went outside and I grabbed a branch from a tree and now I'm going to cut little stems so that I can replace the pumpkin stems and just hot glue them in place. And now is when things get fun and creative here. So I'm going to use a, a foam board from the Dollar Tree and I am going to cut several pieces. What I want to do is create a 3D truck. So I want to make it look, I want to keep the same angle of the truck, but I want to give it a small tiny bed for the truck. And that way it's going to look like the pumpkins are going to be inside the bed of the truck. And it'll all make sense here. So I'm just going to freehand some cuts here and I'm going to start placing them on the back of the top of the truck and that way I am going to just you'll see it as I put everything together it's just going to be added to you see what I'm going here so I'm just going to add all pieces together using these two little foam board pieces that way it adds a 3d effect All right, so before I put anything together, I want to distress it using some Waverly antiquing wax, and I'm just going to focus mainly on the details and the edges. And I'm just gonna add some of the original details that it lost, like the headlights, the bumper, and that kind of thing. Get away from every little thing just to try to make it through. I've been thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I cry instead. I am going to use some more of that mossy bench um, paint, that little teal paint, and I'm just going to trace over the happy harvest that was already there. You can see it, and I'm just going to go over it with it, and that way it just goes along with the color scheme I was going for. Everything I ever worked for vanished in the blink of an eye. I've been asking every question. And now I'm just going to hot glue everything together. And this is when you just start seeing everything come together. And I just love it. And then I'm going to start adding the little pumpkins, which are super adorable. And some more little details. That way it just has a fall look to it. 
And so many of you love, love, love this truck. And I absolutely love the way it turned out too. I actually gave it to my mom along with the other DIYs that were part of this video. And she just, she had it the entire fall season and she just loved it. nothing left foam board that I got from Artisa but you can certainly use any foam board you have at home either from Dollar Tree or anywhere else I'm going to freehand a skate um, I have no idea if it was going to turn out good or bad but I actually like the way it turned out so you can certainly google images for you know free images for skates and or ice skating and you can certainly print it and then use it as a template but free handing it there turned out pretty well for me. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to cut it off. And then I'm going to use this cutout of this skate to then trace and cut out a second one. Chilling and having a good, good time. Doesn't matter if the snow is falling or the windows in the rain is pouring. It will always be Christmas in my heart. But this year I wanna hang out with my friends and friends. I took both skates outside and I'm just gonna spray paint the blade using a hammered silver tone rustoleum spray paint. Once it was dry, I took it inside and I'm going to take a Dollar Tree black, white, and red scarf. I have been a little bit obsessed with these scarves. Um, this is not an infinity scarf, but it's a regular scarf. But um, certainly beautiful, beautiful colors. Perfect for um, Christmas. And I'm going with a cottage, snowy, kind of comfy Christmas decoration. So I think it's perfect. I'm going to hot glue the top portion of the skate. So the boot part, I'm just going to hot glue the edges attach the scarf and then cut out the excess. Good, good time. Doesn't matter if the snow is falling or the windows 
Once I have both boots cut out and ready, I'm going to take this dusting mop from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut off about an inch from each side. Um, this is just going to be a little fussy part that I'm going to add to the skates. And then I'm going to hot glue it in place and cut off the excess. I am now going to take some gray yarn and I'm going to hot glue to mimic some laces. At first I thought I'd use a chalk marker but it didn't work out so yarn worked out perfect. Go outside, the snow is falling down and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. We're holding hands to keep each other warm while we stand and watch a choir perform and all the Christmas songs that we love. All right, so now I am going to hot glue both skates together. I want them to have kind of like a a look like when you hang the skates from the laces kind of look but I want them to stick together and not just bounce around because it is foam board so I want them to be um, very sturdy so I'm just going to hot glue the um, front of the skate to the back of the other one and now I'm going to take some additional yarn and I'm just going to cut out uh two pieces but I'm going to fold it in half and that way it's going to look like laces from both skates and that is where I would hang it from. As an added touch, I'm going to add some frosted greenery that I have here left over from previous Christmas seasons. This is just to add a little bit of greenery detail and a little bit of a frosted look. Again, I'm going for a snowy cottage kind of um, Let's go outside. The snow is falling down and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. We're holding hands to keep each other warm while we stand and watch a choir perform and all the Christmas songs that we love. Yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. All right, guys, so for this next DIY, it was actually one of my favorite, favorite of the year. I took this little shelf-like table that I found on Marketplace. It was absolutely in horrible shape. It was wobbly. It was just, I don't even know how much I got it for it, but it was very inexpensive. So the first thing I needed to do was to tighten some of these screws that were already on it just to kind of give it a little bit more stability. And then I am going to pre-drill a, a few holes here on these one by twos. I am going to use them to attach them to the inside of each side panel because I'm going to give it an extra shelf. So this will serve as the um, just a portion where the shelf will sit on.
All right, so this next thing I'm going to do is to create a door for the shelf. So I'm going to turn this shelf into a cabinet. So I'm gonna take one by twos once again, and I'm going to use my Craig jig once again and drill a couple of holes right on each side of the one by twos on the same side, but just on different ends. And that way I can attach them to each other um, actually, I'm just going to do the pocket holes on just two of them because then those two will attach to the other two and you'll see what I'm talking about. It'll just create a nice rectangular kind of shape for the door. And then of course now is just make sure that they are attached with the appropriate size pocket hole screws. And I'm just using the drill bit that comes with the Craig jig. All right, so now I'm going to use this chicken wire that I got at the hardware store. This is like the real thing, guys. This is not the crafting kind. This is the kind that is tougher to work with, but it's so worth it when you are creating a cabinet because, you know, you want it to be pretty, pretty stable. As you can see, I added a middle uh, one by two. Um just because I wanted to just add a little bit more stability to the door as well as just to that's where the shelf is going like that middle shelf that I added is going to kind of land on and you'll see when I attach it to it so I'm just going to attach the chicken wire using my staple gun All right, so now it's time to get things clean and ready for some paint. Um, basically, it was already pretty clean because I already had cleaned it, but because of all the drilling and that, I wanted to make sure it was clean. I'm going to give everything two coats of regular household paint and I'm going to do the same thing to the door. Now I am going to um, dry brush also the chicken wire which is why I attached the chicken wire before I paint it because I wanted to paint it anyways. I'm going to stencil right on top of this French stencil that I have used several times already and I am using Rustoleum chalk pen in the country gray.
Now, I'm not a big fan of distressing regular latex paint because it does not distress as smooth as chalk paint. However, after I painted this uh, cabinet, I just thought I just need to distress it. It just has a true farmhouse look. So I am distressing it. But as you can tell, I'm like kind of putting my hand over it because I just know it's not as smooth as chalk paint with distress. But it is what it is. It turned out good at the end. I am also distressing the top to make sure that stencil looks like it's been part of the table all along. And now it's time to attach the door. So I'm just going to use these hinges that I got at the hardware store. I'm going to first attach them to the door and then attach the door to the cabinet to make it a cabinet. <laughs> I then got this um, handle from the hardware store, very inexpensive. I just thought it had a really cool shape and it just went along with the whole cabinet look. So you see the door, how the shelf actually lays right behind that extra little um, but a little piece of wood that I put there. All right, so now to cover the back, I'm just gonna use a piece of paneling that I had on hand. I cut it to size using my table saw and now I'm just going to staple it in place. And we're just about done guys and you're gonna see here in a minute why this is one of my favorite diys ever the transformation is outstanding <laughs> i still look at it and it makes me smile i love doing these kind of diys because this is the true meaning of diying and flipping furniture i just love that it got a brand new look and i don't have this one i wish i could have kept it but i did sell it and the owner just loved how rustic farmhouse it looked All right, so for my next project, guys, this is going to be a little bit more extensive, but it's so worth it. So I am taking these two drawers that I got off of a desk that I updated into two side tables or two nightstands. And these four legs that are off of a table that was absolutely in the garbage, literally, it was in the garbage. And I took off the legs of it because it was the legs are super cute. The table was not in good shape, so I did end up getting rid of that. So the goal for these two drawers is to turn them into a side, side table with a farmhouse look. So I am going to put them together or join them together using wood glue and some clamps and then let the wood glue dry. Um, I'm also going to place a paint or a can of paint on top just to add a little bit more weight to it for pressure so that way that glue bonds very, very well. I did end up putting, and it's not on the video, but I did end up putting a couple um, brad nails using my brad nail gun, but only on the edges because that's as far as my nail gun was able to reach. So it's just a couple on each side um, to help secure the bond between the two drawers. All right, so I measured earlier the top or the width and the depth of the two drawers together. And now I'm gonna cut four pieces of this one by 10 that we got at the hardware store. And the reason to it is because I wanna, I want the two drawers to rest on 
solid wood and also I want to build a top for the drawer so that it can be a table and I want it to flip open so it's going to have kind of like a trunk look so I'm really excited about this guys you're gonna see how beautiful this table turned out so once I had the four pieces cut I am going to add pocket holes on just two of the boards and I'm gonna add three pocket holes on one end on the side so on the longer side this Craig jig is awesome guys I do have it on my Amazon store if you're interested in looking at it they do sew a smaller one um, but in my opinion this is better just because it's just it you can clamp it it's secure and I just really love it I use it all the time so once the pocket holes were uh, made I am now sanding it all right, so now I moved inside and I'm going to join both or each board, oh my gosh, the four boards. I'm gonna join two together and that way to create the bottom and the top. I am using pocket hole screws. These are the inch and a quarter, which is the appropriate size for the thickness of this wood. And that's it, I'm just gonna join them and that way it has nice strong joints. And I did the same thing on the other two boards. All right, so I flipped over. So now the drawers are semi-glued. <laughs> I did have to flip them very carefully. So the wood or the wood glue is still kind of drying, but I did flip them over and I'm adding wood glue to the edges because those are the raised part. That's where the, the wood board is going to lay on, if that makes sense. So I added wood glue and now I'm going to use brad nails to secure it, but only brad nails on those edges because those are the ones that are going to attach to so I'm being I'm going to be very careful on where I place those brad nails making sure that I stay on the edges so that they do not poke through the drawer and you don't want anything poking through the drawer because if I'm going to store things in it I don't want anything to rip All right, so now I took the two drawers to my um, table and I'm going to place these hinges that I got at the hardware store. I'm just gonna place two, one on each side and this is what's going to make the top now a nice door to be able to close it open. I'm so happy about this guys, you don't understand. I'm so excited because we are, we are in need of this side little table to go on this little part in our living room and this is gonna be perfect there, you'll see. So I marked with a pencil where the three holes should go. Not that I needed to mark them, but I just wanted to make sure that the hinge part was right in the center where the two boards meet. And then I attach the other hinge to the other side. All right, so I am going to not um, not oh my gosh I do not have the pools that came with the with the drawers but I'm okay with it because I have other plans for it so I'm going to fill in the holes with some wood filler let it dry while the wood filler dries I am going to stain the top uh, just the top I'm not gonna do the bottom the reason being is because I want this table to also have a very chippy uh, distress look and when I distress the top I want that darker tone to come through or pop through the white paint that I'll be um, painting it with so that's why I am staining it and this stain is by Barathane and it's their Briar Smoke it's one of my favorite I have not used it in a while um, but I'm very happy I still have it because it's just it looks very nicely when it pops through that white all right, so the wood filler is almost dry. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm sanding it with a 220 grit sandpaper, making sure it's nice and smooth. And um, I'm also sanding a little bit of the finish that were on the drawers that was chipping off. All right, so onto the legs. I am going to remove this top part just by cutting right there with my miter saw. I didn't show that because it's just cutting them, but that's where I cut. So now I'm using a square because I want to mark two inches from each corner. So I am going to mark two inches from each side 
so that I can find a nice center point. And I'll do that on all four corners so that I know where to pre-drill holes to attach the legs. And then I grab a drill bit that um, would be appropriate size for the screw that I'll be using. And I'm going to drill holes on the bottom or each corner as well as the middle of each leg on the part that I cut. And now I am adding a good amount of wood glue because I want these legs to be very, very secure, very, very tight. And I'm going to screw in the screw from the inside of the drawer using my drill into the leg. And then once I had it screwed in, I did make sure that I tighten by just, you know, like you would any other like table leg, you just tighten it. And then um, it, they were, it were pretty, it was pretty tight, but I'm sorry you can't see the inside of the drawer because I don't have a camera in there. But um, basically I was just screwing in the screw as you can see from the inside and then attaching the leg on the outside. And then of course I did this with all four legs. So now the table is assembled. Now I'm sure you're probably gonna notice that left upper corner is not even. <laughs> I tried, trust me, I tried. But if I evened out the front, that meant the back was uneven and then the hinges could not be tightened well. So I preferred the hinges to be nice and secure and tight. And I'm not gonna lose sleep over it, although I would have preferred for it to be nice and even. These drawers are very old and so they did have a curve to them, but that's just adds to the farmhouse old look that I want this table to have. I want this table to look like it's been around for many, many years and is weathered and chipped. And so I think that little um, curve that that drawer has that didn't allow that top to line up well just adds to the character. But in the ideal world, I would have wanted to. You can see it better there. See how it didn't match. But in an ideal world, I would have wanted it to match. But Again, like I said, it just adds to the character and I ended up being okay with it. So I added a coat of Kills Primer in the stain blocking formula and then I'm going to add two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And of course, I let each coat dry in between. I am using my Tatler and Tatum Tatler and Tatum, yes, <laughs> chalk paint brush. Again, I have most of these products in my Amazon store link down below. And if you have not visited my merchandise store, the shirt that I have on that says I am a DIY beauty is now available in my merchandise store. So it'll be linked down below in the description box as well. All right, so I'm going to use these catalog card pools that I got off of Amazon. Again, is also on my Amazon store. And I'm going to spray paint them in a flat black by rust -Oleum. So that way it matches the rest of my decor. I recently updated my entertainment center, my media center, and I spray painted it with the same or spray painted the hardware with the same paint. So I want it to match. I decided to add a stencil to the top of the table. This stencil is one that I got online. I want to say it was from Essential Stencil, but I'm not sure. I will link the two stores that I mainly get my stencils from. Um, but it might also be from Amazon, so I'll research it. If I find it, I'll link it down below. What I want this done so to look like is a French script. And what I want it to look like, I want it to look like this writing has been on this table for years and it has faded through the years. So that's why you're going to see me doing it very randomly. And I think I kind of did okay. <laughs> I really like the way it turned out. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side very lightly, even less writing Again, just making it look like the writing kind of just faded through the years. All right, so now onto the distressing. I am using, now I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper to get really through that, um, the two coats of paint and the one coat of primer. And I'm going to distress pretty heavily the table on all the edges. The front of the drawers are going to be distressed. I want this to have a very old weathered look.
right guys so i am pre-drilling holes where i want the pools to be on and um and then i'm just going to attach them using this some screws some small screws they're not really drawers so we're not going to pull on them so small screws was uh, sufficient to you I'm going to take drop cloth I have left over from several projects that I have done and I still have quite a bit left over and I'm going to just place nine of these wood slices from Arteza but you can get these on Amazon you can get them pretty much several places and I'm going to create a little sack for these now what I'm going to create here is a very cute handmade tic-tac-toe um, game so I am placing these wood slices on top to use kind of like a measurement. And then now I am just going to cut the fabric so that I know that I have enough to create not just a sack to store the wood slices, but also have the tic-tac-toe board. So I'm going to fold it in half, make sure that all my sides are equally and evenly cut. And um, of course, cut them to make sure that they are. And then I'm just going to hot glue two of the open areas but I'm gonna leave the fuzzy one um, to the top so that that can be my top part where um, it opens and closes. all right so now i'm just going to flip it inside out or not inside out right side out <laughs> and i'm going to make sure that all the ends and, and the corners are nicely um flatten i guess um and now i'm going to start drawing the tic-tac-toe board which is not hard but what i'm going to do is place the slices once again right on top and that'll give me a visual of what i'm doing or what i want to do at first i thought i would use a ruler right away but what i decided to do is just place a few dots right where i knew i needed to draw lines and then connect the dots with the ruler with the, no, it's not a ruler, it's a square. <laughs> and I'm using a marker by Artisa. This is a permanent fabric marker from Artisa. And I'm gonna have these things linked down in the description box for you. All right, so now is on to getting the O's and the X's on the wood slices. Very easy. I'm just going to take five and five 
and I'm going to use just this little washi tape circle thing. I just thought it was the perfect size. I'm going to use that as the guide to create the O's and then I'm just going to freehand the X's on the additional five. And now I'm just going to place the slices right inside and I'm just going to tie the sack very loosely, very cute, right on top and take some jute rope and tie it around. That way it just looks so cute. It has that farmhouse kind of antique look. I just love stuff like this. I don't know if you guys feel me on this, but I just love stuff like this. So again, I'm just going to tie it and then I'm going to tie around a little tag that I bought at the Target dollar spot. They come like a several actually in a little packet and they're really cute and it says do not open until christmas just so stinking cute and it has the white and the red um striped ribbon and that's it guys look how cute this i would love to get a gift like this to give this to a family is so inexpensive and you don't have to use drop cloth you can use whatever you have on hand any fabric you may have as long as the you know one side would be plain print where you can draw the tic-tac-toe board and then also the wood slices if you don't have the wood slices you can use regular pieces of wood maybe if you had like a one by three and you cut them into three by three inches and that way you can draw the o's and the x's right on it so cute love 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 the way this turned out I am going to take this Dollar Tree Christmas sign and I am going to cut each plank and separate them from each other. I am using my X-Acto knife and my yardstick. That way I can just cut right through it. And this material that Dollar Tree uses for their signs, it's just one where you can just score kind of, and then you just kind of keep, um, you'll see what I'm doing here, but it'll basically, you just kind of score it and you keep kind of bending it until you get a nice smooth edge. All right, so now that I have all three pieces separated, I am going to fill in the holes with some wood filler, let it dry, and then I'm going to make some angled cuts on one end of each plank. That way I'll have arrows. I am going to measure or kind of mark where the center is and then two and a half inches on each side. And then well, that way I'll know um, what angle to kind of cut. And then also all of them will have the same angled cuts.
swim Jump the fence before the summer begins And getting cool in the summer heat with you, my sweet Sitting in the back of your car Wishing for this road to take us far I am now going to take one of those larger paint stirring sticks that you can get at the hardware store they're only 98 cents and you can get like a pack of three but I do get mine on Amazon because I can get just a whole bunch all at once so and I do have them in my Amazon store if you're interested in purchasing them I tell you what to me having that many with me at all times is just a time saver and I don't have to keep running to the um, hardware store but I'm going to just going to grab one of them here and I'm going to stain them using the rust-oleum chalked glaze in the brown tone while that is drying i am now going to give each arrow two coats of rustoleum chalk pan and the linen white Using my Cricut, I cut three words. One says bonfire, the other one says hot cocoa bar, and the other one says ski lodge. And I'm just going to place them, making sure that I am placing them where two arrows are facing one way and one arrow is facing the opposite way. I am now going to start placing them in an angled kind of position and I'm just going to hot glue them. They are very light so you do not, I do not need to do anything else but hot glue them and that was perfectly fine. I should have distressed them before I glued them, but I completely forgot. So now I'm just going to distress them lightly on the edges. I just want it to look a little bit more farmhouse rustic style, like they've been outdoors for a little bit. All right, guys, so for this next DIY, it's going to be very similar than the cabinet that you saw earlier. Um, this is a true shelf. This is a lot heavier duty, a lot larger, but I'm going to uh, make it into a cabinet once again. So here I'm just taking some measurements because I am going to build two doors in this time. This time around, it's going to be two doors so that I can, um, again, make it or turn it into a cabinet. So I'm just going to take some measurements and then make some cuts using my miter saw. Look out here. 
she comes Woman that I love It's too bad she'll never know Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel Because she has someone who makes her happy I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least I try to be Cause I hope that I'm not showing How I feel for her and then once again, I am going to make some pocket holes just on the pieces that I need to make pocket holes at. And this time I'm making things double because I'm making two doors. And I apologize for the angle here. I don't know what was going on with my camera at the time, but I didn't want to skip this process because again, it's just a very important process because this is how I built my doors. And then once again, using the appropriate size pocket screws, I am going to attach them. And again, I just placed the holes or made the holes on the vertical part of the doors and I am attaching them to the top part of the board. All right, so here I'm just making sure that both doors are exactly the same size. I'm very happy with what I'm seeing. Now I have this piece of paneling that I am going to use. Um, it's just, again, just one of those pieces that I find at the scrap wood aisle or area in the hardware store. So here I'm just going to measure and make some cuts using my table saw because of course I needed to, to make sure that it fit. There's my little guy helping me with his own tools. <laughs> I wanted to include that there because I thought that was super cute. All right, so now that I make the cuts, it's time to put things together. I am using my nail gun and I'm just going to nail it all the way around. Listen when she talks, I watch her when she walks, she's giving me these feelings that I took it outside to the garage and now I'm going to stain them. I am going to be distressing these as, as I mentioned earlier. If I'm going to distress something, I'd like it to have a very contrasting color underneath the white or not the white. In this case, it's going to be um, like a beige, like a darker beige, but it's still going to be um, light enough where if I distress, I do want that darker tone to show underneath. All right, so now it's time to get things moving. <laughs> Isn't this the life of a DIYer, huh? Moving things and oof. So I'm getting this cabinet very clean. It was actually not bad. It's just very dusty. So removing all kinds of spider webs um, and dust from it, making sure it's ready for some paint. She'll never know. It's like she stole my heart. Without knowing she did. But I guess that it will pass Yeah, I can't be the only one Who got lost inside the blue of those eyes I've gotta let her go I know it won't be easy I wanna hold her close But I have to try Try as hard as I can Cause she'll never be mine the color that I am using is the Pale Sepia by Bare Chalk Paint. They do have a chalk paint line with tons of options for colors. This one is one of my favorites from them, and I'm going to give it two coats of this paint. I know it won't be easy I 
Alright, so I am going to cover the front part of the doors using this fabric. This is like a sack from burlapfabric.com. It's beautiful. It's so heavy duty. Now, I should have done this step before I actually place the panel behind the door because it would have made my life a lot easier. But I didn't. But you know what? That's how we learn. We live and we learn. So here I'm trying to make it work. You know, before I start removing backs or anything, I try, try, try my best to make sure that I can just cut it to size and kind of squeeze it in and attach it. It ended up not working. I was just not satisfied with the way it was looking. So I did have to end up removing the back, attaching the or placing the cover or the sack and then putting back on. Again, a lot more work, but I'm just showing you the entire process. Now I am going to be distressing the doors, um, just making sure that they have a very farmhouse look to it. I'm going to be doing the same thing to the cabinet. I've been thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I cry instead. And then, of course, because I did use chalk paint, I want to make sure everything is sealed in. So I'm using the Verithane polyurethane in the crystal clear. This time around, I'm using my nylon brush just to avoid as much as possible the brush strokes. And I'm going to do this the entire thing. I'm going to do twice. And then on the top, I'm going to do three times. So here I am back to the doors. <laughs> we haven't forgotten about this mistake, right? So here's where I am just starting to now um, redo things to make sure that it's done correctly. And so you're going to see here in a minute how much better it was. <laughs> Trust me, I was so frustrated with myself, the fact that I had to redo this. And it's not like it was extremely hard work. It's just, you know, things like this take a while. Flips like this take a long time. And it's not um, easy when you have to take things apart and do it again. So now it's time to place the hinges on these doors and then attach them to the cabinet. Try 
I am going to use the same handles that I used on the previous cabinet, but this time they're going to be in the black. I wish I would have um, spray painted the hinges black to match, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, looking back, I think I should have, but um, nonetheless, I think it was an absolute stunning transformation. It's one of my absolute favorites, and the person who bought it just fell in love with that blue popping out. It was just a beautiful, beautiful cabinet. All right, guys, so for this next DIY, it's another beautiful transformation. This time around, I'm using this round table that I, uh, I believe it was brought to me by a family member that found it on the side of the road. And I thought to myself, well, it's not really my style. And if I'm being very honest, I cannot stand painting anything that has so many spindles. So I decided to turn it into a farmhouse sign, of course, right? So I'm going to literally take this whole thing apart. I mean, like I had my hammer to it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna see here in a minute I was like tearing this stuff apart because all I'm gonna need is the top portion of it Two things. One, yes, I should have been wearing shoes. <laughs> and the second thing is um, I did keep all uh, as many parts as possible and I still use them for DIYs till this day. I love keeping parts. All right, so I am not overly concerned about the back, but I do want to fill in these um, these holes because um, they're just pretty big. And this sign is going to be also multi-purpose and it's also going to be a super large uh, serving tray. And you're going to see here in a minute. So I'm just filling it in with some wood filler and I'm going to let it fully dry. I flipped it over and I did place the um, board 
on top of, I can't remember what it was, but it was on top of something so that the wood filler would not get on the table, just so that I can work at the same time as it's drying. So I'm just gonna make sure it's very, very clean, um, sanding it and also cleaning it with some crud cutter. And now it's time to start painting. I am going to use Rust-Oleum Chalk Pen and the Linen White and I'm going to give it three coats. For the second coat, I started using um, my chalk paint brush because it just leaves a lot less streaks um, and brush strokes. For any other DIY, I would have been fine using the other brush, but for something this big, like a furniture piece, I should have just already started with my chalk paint brush, but I didn't, and that's okay <laughs> um, because it, it worked really well. You could just see how much better it covers. And then now it's time to start distressing. I am going to focus mainly on the edges and that way it has a nice farmhouse look to it. I am using a 120 grit sandpaper and my electric sander. Using my Cricut Design Space, I am going to design a, just, just a design, a farmhouse style design. At first I was gonna use uh, what you're gonna be seeing here on the screen in a little bit, and then I switched to a different one, more of a round shaped one. Um, once I saw this one, it was just, just not what I was looking for. So I just changed it, but I wanted to show you again all the steps that I took. This is the next day and now that the wood glue is fully, fully dry, I'm going to sand it down as smooth as possible and then make sure that it's clean and dust free to then paint the other side as well.
So this is still on the back side. I am now going to just um, uh, mark where I want to place, place some claw hooks. I want to make sure these are nicely placed and very snug because let me tell you what, this thing was heavy duty, solid and very heavy. And I don't want it to fall anywhere. So I'm going to place them. Now you're going to see that I'm also going to add some felt pads and actually going to double up on the felt pads. And that's because I want it to be high enough to where if it's used as a serving tray, it's the claw hooks are not going to scratch any surface. And now you're going to start seeing the design that I went with is more of a rounder design and then I'm just going to stencil it um, right in the center. Enough. 
and I am sealing it with again varathane polyurethane making sure that it's sealed and nothing is if something spills on it it's not going to stain um, and making sure it's nicely um, sealed than me that can make you feel the way you feel when I hold you I think I said enough and what I'm doing here and I'm just using some painters tape to help me get it right I'm going to use some handles now again because this is going to be either a sign for the wall or a serving tray I want to have some handles so I want to make sure that they are even as possible and because this is a circle surface <laughs> I it is a little harder to find like the center so because the center can be in so many spots but I want this to be evenly and nicely um, um, to the eye you know not perfect of course nothing's ever perfect but as close as possible And I am just about done with this one, guys. And this is why it's one of my top ones <laughs> of the year. It is beautiful. And again, this thing is so heavy duty, so strong. And it's sold. It actually took about a couple weeks to sell. I was surprised. But it is a large piece. You know, it's not for everybody. But the person who purchased it loved the fact that it can be used as a super extra large serving tray or a wall piece. And it's just so beautiful. All right, my friends, moving along to number two. This is one of probably one of my top ones. And so many people absolutely loved, loved this DIY. This was a piece of wall decor that my cousin gave me. She was getting rid of it. She was changing things up and she asked me if I wanted it. And I, of course, said yes. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the beautiful arrow. It's a metal arrow. I did keep it for another DIY. But for now, I do not need it. 
So this piece was already pretty clean. It just needed to be wiped off just from a little dust. Nothing, nothing major. And then I'm going to take some spackle and I am going to fill in the holes where the uh, arrows were attached to. And then I'm also going to use it to create texture, like a raised stencil on the frame of it. And you're going to see here in a minute, I'm going to take a regular stencil. I am going to use a portion of the stencil and I'm going to use spackle to create a raised stencil and give it a little bit more character. Now we do have to leave this dry. I left it dry overnight. I just wanted to make sure it was going to be nicely dry. But I think after a few hours, it should be okay to paint as long as you don't scrape it. And now it's time to paint. I am using Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white, and I'm going to give everything two coats, including the center portion. So now I'm going to use another stencil. This is a French script stencil and I am going to use Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray and I'm going to start stenciling on uh, the beautiful thing about this stencil just like the one I use for the little drawer cabinet table that I created earlier is I like to make it seem like it's been around for a while and I like to stencil it very uneven. So I'm looking for not perfection at all. I am going to go heavy on some spots. I'm going to go super light on other, make it look like it's been fading throughout the years and make it look like it's been there for a while. And I'm going to do the whole middle portion of it. Met him on a sunny day in late July and everything turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind. I told him I want that great love, like standing in the middle of a bonfire. You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight, knowing that you can't get burned. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other. I honestly don't know. Then tell me how we messed up, drifting away from each other. Didn't want to let you go. Daddy wanna take it slow, but I couldn't help that I wanted to take it 
to the next level Cause I wanted that great love Like standing in the middle of a bonfire You don't know how you got there But you hold tight Knowing that you can't get burned Just tell me how we lost track Of everything but each other I honestly don't know Then tell me how we messed up Drifting away from each other Didn't wanna let you go All right, guys, so now it's time to get things a little distressed. Now, I'm going, I'm not going to go heavy handed on this distress, and I'm definitely not going to distress on the parts where I spackled the stencil. No way, because it's going to come off. But I am going to focus just on the edges, um, on all ages, even ages, and all edges, even the ones in the middle, just being very careful that I do not touch the raised stencil. It's just to give it a little bit more of a farmhouse chic look. all right so now i've signed to add a couple of holes to the um kind of center there i'm going to be placing some four florals and as i did on my very first diy i want to be able to thread some wire right through it and attach the florals just like that um and i did the florals that you i'm going to be using are ones that i got on amazon um they're part of uh just a bundle of peonies that i got and i am still obsessed with but i use um the different florals that came with it just a beautiful beautiful pink tones now you're going to see that the stem of the florals florals I did wrap on some raffia ribbon. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. I don't know. For some reason, I put, I did that part after. I don't know what I was thinking. But I am going to show you here in a minute. So I basically wrapped them around. That way, it just looked a little bit more finished than just having some plain plastic, you know, stems. And here's what I'm talking about. I just took some raffia ribbon and I'm just going to wrap, wrap, wrap around. And it wasn't hard. It just took a little longer because it's such a thin um, stem. But other than just wrapping, I just then secured it with hot glue. Cigarettes on the table. Dirty plates on the stove. I don't know if you know where to start, but I know where you'd like to be. I'm afraid that I've lost you, cause you're hiding from me. Yeah, it shows that it's cost you a lot to be like the rest of us. To be like the rest of us. I've been waiting so long for the storm. I know that is in you. I know that is in you. Dancing away with the world. I then decided to create a multiple loop bow just to add a little something, something right underneath the flowers and just to kind of finish it off. And then that's it for this one, guys. Another beautiful one. I loved the way this turned out. I think it just has such a feminine 
timeless look to it. I love the raised stencil. I think I think that was like the top thing that everybody just loved was just that raised stencil and how it was just a very faint but very beautiful detail added there. And um, overall, it was just a beautiful flip of a wall decor that was bound to go in the garbage. And we made it to number one, my friends. Now, this was a very recent one. And the reason why it's my number one is because by far, I have gotten the most compliments on this decor I used for my Christmas mantle. And if you haven't seen the decorate with me mantle decoration video, I, I did it on or I posted it on my at home channel. I am going to have a link down below. Um, it just looks beautiful right above my mantle. I, uh, this door was given to me once again by my cousin <laughs> who gives me the decor and the stuff that she does not want. And of course I take it. I am going to give the entire thing, including handle, including the glass, two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Now, after I painted it, because this is glass and yes, you can certainly paint glass with chalk paint. But you have to be careful because it is a smooth surface and it can scratch. So I am distressing it with a 220 grit sandpaper, but I am not distressing that glass, guys. Seriously, I am only focusing on the edges of the frame. Once I distressed it and I cleaned it, I took it outside and I'm just going to spray it, and there's a bug, with this top coat from Rust-Oleum. This is just to ensure that it will not get scratched. I can't guarantee that it will not, but um, it is up on the wall and nobody's touching it, so I think it'll be okay. And I used my Cricut to create these little evergreen pines, and I am just going to start placing them right on the bottom part of the glass portion. I also created the phrase farmhouse Christmas and I'm just going to just once again just place it looking for the center making sure everything's nicely even and spaced out as it should as well as the Christmas one and just place it um, using my transfer tape and once again guys a lot of these supplies including the vinyl and the transfer tape that I use are under my Amazon store which is linked down below.
after the um, stencil was put in place, it's time to add some greenery and some decor. I'm going to use these garland ties from the Dollar Tree. I used about five of them and I'm just going to tie it around using ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to create a little swag and I'm going to um, create it and then hot glue it right underneath that handle. Um, I did place two claw hooks on the back of the sign and that's where I hung it from just to let you know. It's, I don't think it's on the video but um, I'm just going to add a couple more of these evergreen picks that I got on Amazon and then some of these frosted berries from the Dollar Tree to kind of um, add some color to it. And then I did add a small bowl right in the center of it using some, I believe it was Dollar General ribbon and um, attach it again with hot glue. And we're just about done guys i am so excited it almost makes me very emotional to think of this journey of this year that we've been through and all these diys that were part of my expression and i just want to thank you guys for watching for spending time with me and every day every week and watching my videos and um yeah thank you i'm getting emotional here but thank you so much it's been a great year besides everything crazy that's going on in the world it's been a great year and i am so thankful to god for that and i'm thankful for you guys and i know it's a lot of content here in this video but let me know which one stood out to you the most which one of these i know it's a whole mix of seasons a whole mix of furniture flips home decor all kinds of stuff but which one is more memorable to you let me know in the comments down below if you're visiting for the first time if this is your very first video you ever watched and you have not subscribed to my channel i hope you consider doing so joining our youtube family there are some new things coming up for the next year and i can't wait to to show you guys and if you're returning thank you so much for coming back i so appreciate your time i am going to have a playlist here with another uh, with tons more I should say mega videos just like this one with tons more of just inspiration for all kinds of seasons so check it out if you want to watch more have a blessed day guys have fun DIYing and I'll see you next time bye outside, we gather around the fireplace and no one cares about yesterday